Thank you very much for letting me come from north of the border. Um, you've already said my own position that I'm from the Justice and Peace Commission of the Catholic Church. And we started it in this uh, project in September 2015. Church of Scotland came to us with a proposal for what they called a refugee coordination project. And that was a time, if you remember, 2015, we had so many issues with migrants, with refugees, and with um, media talking about this. And we were at that point also expecting that we'd have a lot of Syrian families coming to Scotland through the Vulnerable Persons Resettlement Scheme. Uh, so they came to us and we said, yep, definitely want to be involved because we have a lot of ecumenical work going on in Scotland. Uh, and the question they said was, what about interfaith? Would you be happy? And we said, of course, why on earth would we not? Again, we have good interfaith relationships up here. And uh, most of the refugees we were going to be seeing if, through the Syrian scheme would almost certainly not be Christian. And we thought this was a way to reach out. So what we are now, we have the Church of Scotland. We have the Catholic Church, United Reform, United Free Churches, the Episcopal Church, the Methodists, Salvation Army, Society of Friends, two Muslim groups, the Muslim Council of Scotland and the Scottish Owl Bait Society, and SCOJEC, which is the Scottish Council of Jewish Communities. And we also have a representation from Interfaith Scotland, and I see Maureen Sears on the uh, event today. The Church of Scotland set us off by appointing David Bradwell as our first coordinator, and it was an inspired choice because David is creative and enthusiastic, he's a great networker, and he gets things done. He's actually moved on to another post, but he's been succeeded by his colleague, colleague Sabine Chalmers, who does David's wholehearted commitment to a team. David wasted no time getting us up and running. He came out with proposals for, we have to get a name, he said. We need a website, we need a Twitter account, we need a Facebook. We need a booklet of information for parishes and faith communities, and we want to have a conference. And that was all before we'd even met for the first time. What we did, first of all, after getting our names sorted out, was we needed to get um, agreement on what our aims would be. And our first one was going to be telling people in our faith communities what the practical issues, the theological issues, and the social issues were relating to refugees and asylum seekers. People were getting a lot of fake information, People wanted to help out, didn't know where to go. So, as I'll mention later, we actually produced a book of resources and information to get the facts out there, which was very important. We wanted to, to also arrange and support joint humanitarian and advocacy efforts for the welfare of refugees and asylum seekers. We wanted to challenge the rhetoric that we were seeing in politics and media at that time. We wanted to develop projects to assist with integration of refugees and asylum seekers. And as a side issue, perhaps we wanted to have deeper ecumenical relationships as a result of our work. Initially, the project was going to be a year until October 16, uh, and then we we're going to review to see if it was doing anything. Was it valuable? Was it working? And the answer without a doubt was yes. Um, the Church of Scotland then produced a proposal for carrying on until at least May 2020, when the VPRS scheme would end and they looked for funding from other churches. So it took a deep breath, and I think we all managed to get our churches to actually produce some cash to help this out. Um, then we got to December 2019, and we were thinking, okay, what do we do post May? We thought it's a good idea. We want it to continue. There's lots of value for what we're doing. Of course, we then went into lockdown, and like a lot of people, we thought it was going to be finished pretty quickly. So we'll get things going, of course. Two years later, we're just beginning to come out of it. But what we thought was we wanted to start developing it as um, support for all refugees, and we wanted to involve refugees themselves in it. It was something we'd thought about before, but hadn't had time to do. So what we're now thinking of is probably another rolling four-year program, and um, we have managed to get our, the major churches to continue year-on-year -year funding for this. So that's where we are at the present time. One of the first things we did was probably on the language and politics in the media. Many of you will remember the beloved Katie Hopkins and her comments about cockroaches. Even our late, uh, our former Prime Minister, David Cameron, talking about swarms. And of course, the Daily Mail cartoon. I must admit, I hadn't seen it, but then I don't take the Daily Mail. I wouldn't let it in the door. But it was the one with the people, this dreadful caricature of nose and bearded people going across the border with guns over their shoulders and accompanied by rats. 
So our first action was to complain to both the Daily Mail and the Press Commission. It didn't get us anywhere, but hey, at least they knew that we were watching them, so perhaps they would start thinking of what they were doing. Our next action was to meet with Humza Yousaf, who at that time was the Scottish Government Minister responsible for refugees, and to tell them, here, we're here, we want to help, get us involved in things. And the point, of course, was being made to the politicians that as a group, we now present, represented a significant proportion of the Scottish population. David was already involved in some of the refugee integration work, so he got us involved in the Scottish Government's new Scots programme, which ran, was running from 2018 to 2022, and that had replaced an earlier programme for refugee integration. So as a result of being involved in that, we've become a go-to contact point for politicians and civil servants, as well as a channel of communication both for the Scottish Government and the UK Government and the local authorities on refugee and, and faith community issues. And we have also been putting uh, our comments in and consultations on asylum refugee issues. Uh, now that the um, Syrian one has finished, uh, we're now involved with the Scottish Government's Afghanistan ref try again, Afghanistan Resettlement Community Engagement Group. And of course, there would doubtless be something with Ukraine. We've also been working on relationships with organisations such as the Scottish Refugee Council, British Red Cross, Refugee Action, Migrant Help, Shelter, because we had an anti-lockdown uh, walk change protest in Scotland, uh, and many other secular organisations working in the field of migration and refugee or asylum issues. And that's, of course, in addition to working with other faith-based organisations such as Christian Aid, GRS, Rene Kassan. These relationships have fed into our advocacy work, and our latest work has obviously been linking up with organisations on the Nationality and Borders Bill, otherwise better known as the Anti-Refugee Bill, and joining the Together with Refugees Coalition. We've been good at, I think, at producing resources. We've produced a couple of very good booklets on... Um, Called one is Sanctuary in Scotland, and the other is God with Us, which is a worship resources. And you can find all of our resources on our website, which is sfar.org.uk. I think it's .org.com, no, .org.uk. So we've got that website, and you can see our resources there. You can see our Facebook and Twitter pages. And um, I think that has been pretty good at getting some facts out there to people. We've had several uh, conferences where members of faith communities met together with refugees and asylum seekers to talk and to see what's going on. We've managed to develop um, what's called a weekend club in Edinburgh. This was something which um, was started by Interfaith uh, Glasgow. They had one in Glasgow. They recognised that refugees often have things during the week to go to, but nothing at weekends. So the weekend club asks faith communities to host the members of the weekend club at some sort of event or take them to uh, um, a park or something like the zoo. And it's uh, we've now set it up in Edinburgh and that's working very well. Um, we've also managed to get um, joint bids in for funding with, this, two years ago or four years ago in fact, it was with the Scottish Refugee Council, the AMA funding uh, pot from the European Union for a project called the New Scots Integration Programme and SFAR's part was to deliver awareness raising in parishes and other faith communities through talks and publications and piloting what they called the New Scots Holiday Programme, which was inviting faith communities to take some refugees for a weekend or a few days holiday somewhere in the country. It was piloted mainly through the Church of Scotland uh, and has worked very well, and we're now looking to see if we can continue that. It gives refugees a chance to, to be with some of the, the indigenous population, and to, to see part of the country they might never otherwise see. And this year, we've just started a new programme working with Faith Community Scotland called Faithful Welcome. It's reflecting the fact, and we make this point to politicians, that majority of refugees and asylum seekers have a faith connection with some faith community, unlike our very secular world. And what we'll be doing is talking to refugees and asylum seekers about their experiences coming to Scotland, and the needs that they have, and I've sat in one of these uh, focus groups talking with people, and then talking to faith communities about what support do they need to offer a faithful welcome to refugees and asylum seekers. And that programme will continue until November 
2022. And that's basically where we're at at the moment. I think uh, we've been we've discovered a great deal of joy in working together. We've discovered a great deal of um, commonality in working with secular organisations. And I think we've produced the goods, if you like to put it that way, in what we've actually done and we continue to do. And we hope that uh, this will networking will continue for many years to come. Mm -hmm.